Well, hi, Suburban. Um, I'm going to try something tonight that I haven't tried before. I'm going to actually do my devotional time with a selfie stick. And as you can see, I am at our church property where our light display is. And we're going to take some time to walk through and talk a little bit about um, we're just two or three nights away from Christmas. And this is Tuesday night. You'll be seeing this on Wednesday um, in the in the noon noon time, about 11 o'clock, Tuesday mo- or Wednesday morning. And um, I want to spend some time talking about what we have displayed here. But before we do that, let me just I'm going to do a little bit of a of a look around at the lights that we have up. You can see here. Um, as you come in the gate, you've got this wonderful archway that's all lit up, and there's one over on the other side as well. And then we have this little set of trees with a sleigh and, and reindeer, and the trees are all lit up over there. You know, it really just goes to, to show that Christmas is really a magical time. Um, hopefully, you won't have too much noise behind me as the cars go by. But... Um, Christmas is is really magical, isn't it? I mean, the lights and the trees, and and we've been talking about that over the last um, two weeks during our devotional time. And and tonight, I wanna talk a little bit more about the the magical aspect of it, because for us, we don't use the, the word magic. We use the word supernatural, because really, the story of Christmas is actually supernatural. And as we go down the the storyline that we have have gotten here um, for our light display, the first thing we see, the very first part of our story, is of the wise men or the magi. The Bible tells us that there were there were wise men, magi from the east, who saw the star in the sky of Jesus, and so they decided they wanted to go and find where this baby king was going to be born. Now, I don't know if you've thought about what that actually means and and how that demonstrates to us the incredible forethought that God put into um, all of the planning around the coming of the Son of God to the earth. Because these magi were able to look at the prophets and and those who had foretold the coming of the Messiah. And God saw fit to not only put the prophecies in the Bible, but he saw fit to use his creation, the very stars of the sky, to show that the Son of God was going to be born. It's interesting, isn't it? Because we think about the coming of, of a king, and we might think that there would be pomp and ceremony and and all kinds of of celebration. Well, God put a different kind of celebration, and He put it in the sky, and the very stars of the sky just proclaimed the fact that the Son of God was going to come. And these magi, these wise men from the east, saw. In the, in the night sky, this amazing star, and they began searching and researching and, and found the prophecies and then followed that star to go to Bethlehem to find the king. And, and you'll find the rest of their story in Matthew chapter 2. That We then move on down in our nativity or our, our story, and we see these shepherds. And this gives us a little bit more of the, probably the commonness of the fact that the Lord Jesus came not to a palace, not to a, you know, not to a a kingdom as such, but he came to a small town, the town of Bethlehem. Shepherds were out in the fields watching over their sheep, the scripture tells us, at night. And they were some of the first ones to come and witness the birth of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Isn't it just incredible to think about that? To think about the fact that it was just lowly shepherds watching their sheep. 
just out in the field at night doing what they did. And then God sent these amazing messengers, which are represented by our angels, further out down the driveway. And by the way, if you haven't come and seen this whole thing, I would encourage you to, to come and have a look. But here are the angels. And of course, this even gives us more of an understanding of the supernatural nature of what God did, because he sent these incredible messengers, the messengers that were a part of God's, uh, they were a part of heaven. They were a part of what God did. And they, they, these messengers were before the throne of God at all times. And God sent them to the earth to not just give the message to the shepherds, but he first sent them to Mary and Joseph and sent them to prepare them for this amazing event that was going to happen in their lives. I don't know if you can imagine what it must have been like for this young virgin woman in uh, the small town of, of Nazareth to have an angel come and deliver a message to her to say, you're going to become pregnant by the Holy Spirit and God is going to come in flesh and the Son of God is going to be born through you. What an amazing thing that must have been at that, at that time in this young virgin woman's life to, to know that God was going to use her body as a vessel for the Son of God to be born into the world. And of course, these angels said to the shepherds, look, go to Bethlehem and you will find this little babe wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And of course, we then follow our way along this incredible path and we find ourselves at the stable where Mary and Joseph with, and, and sometimes I think we are a little bit we probably are a little bit unrealistic of what that stable must have been like. I mean, we, we do sort of nativities like the one that you're about to see. And I'm going to try to turn around backwards here and walk. Hopefully this is not distracting for you. But we see a nativity like this and it looks, you know, quite amazing. And, and we have the, the lights around it and all of those kinds of things. But in actual fact, this nativity, this stable would have been just like any other stable that you and I know of. It would have been smelly. It would have had animals in it. It would have not been very clean. In fact, the very <laughs> antithesis of what you might think should be true of a baby being born. And yet, this is where the Son of God was born to this young virgin woman, Mary. And God used her in a powerful way to be the, the vessel for the Son of God to be born into the world. That's what God was doing. And so as we think about what has happened here, we're, we're watching this incredible scene and thinking about the supernatural power of God at work in an amazing story that prepared the Son of God to be the Savior of the world. And that's what the angel said. When you have this little boy, Mary, he is going to be the Son of God. He's going to come and save people from their sins. This is, this is who God is bringing through you. This incarnation that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, what an amazing truth that is. Now, along the way, God promised that there were going to be some truths that would be coming because of this incredible incarnation. And we're going to follow the, the pathway here, and, and we're going to look at four different concepts very quickly because I'm, I'm running my time a little low, but I want to show you these incredible words that we have spelled out on our on our fence here. The first word, of course, is the word love. God's love was demonstrated in an incredibly powerful way 
by sending his son. The, the second person of the Trinity, the, the one who was there at the very beginning of creation, God sending his son into the world. And this, the love that God demonstrated and showed through sending his son into the world would become evident because he didn't just come to, to fulfill a story and, and be our Christmas theme, but he came for a purpose. He came so that he could die. Many people have used that phrase to talk about the Christmas story and the Christmas season, that Jesus was born to die. He was born to be that, that one who would demonstrate the love of God. John 3 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And that love that God demonstrated also brought joy into the world. And this is where we see what the angels had said. They said, you're going you're gonna to experience great joy because you're going to find out that this Son of God born into the world is coming to save people from their sins. Now, I don't know about you, but that brings joy to my heart to recognize that my sins have been paid for. I don't have to pay the price for my sin because Jesus came and did it for me. He came to bring me that incredible joy that can only come through forgiveness. But not only did he come to bring joy, the Bible tells us, and, and Pastor Steve's been telling us about Isaiah chapter 9, he also came to bring us peace. And that peace that we can only have through accepting what Christ has done in our lives. Now, there are a lot of people in the world, and you know some of them, maybe you were in that place where you didn't have any peace. There was something missing from your life. You recognized that you were without a settled peace in your heart. You were without that answer to all of the questions of life that came. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world, born of a virgin woman, to become the Son of God, to become the Savior of the world, to bring joy and peace. And that peace can only come because you can be reconciled with God, because you're at odds with the very creator who created you, the one who created the universe and all that we know. We are at odds with him because we're in sin. And when Jesus came and died for our sin, and when we accept that sacrifice that he made for us, then we can have peace with God and then we can experience the peace of God in our lives. There's one more word on the fence that I want to show you. And it's a, it's a very important word because for those who may be listening to this devotion this morning, perhaps you have not been able to experience that joy and that peace. And you are without hope. Maybe it, it, it's... It's a situation in your life where things have been so bad that you haven't been able to understand the hope that is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. You're in despair. There is no hope in your life. The future looks bleak. You don't know what's going to happen to you when you die. Well, let me help you with that. And let me help to, to give you some hope. The Lord Jesus Christ, born in a manger, in a stable, to a young Jewish virgin woman, came to bring hope to the world. He came to bring salvation. He came, as the angels told us, to be the Savior of the world. The hope is found in him. Your hope is not in your possessions. Your hope is not in what you might 
achieve or accomplish through your, your job or your education or, or anything else, your hope is found in Jesus Christ. And can I help you to understand that in this Christmas season, in this time of year that we celebrate the birth of the Son of God, prophesied and understood by the wise men, proclaimed to the shepherds in the field by the angels sent from God, superintended over by the Holy Spirit as Mary and Joseph were a part of this marvelous plan. Seeing this baby born in a stable, they laid him in a manger, and that baby grew to become a man, and he gave himself as a sacrifice for our sin. That's why we can have hope. I trust that you will have hope and peace and joy because of God's love that was shed abroad by giving His Son, the Lord Jesus, into our lives. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your wonderful story of hope and peace and joy and love. And God, thank you for sending your Son into the world, this wonderful plan of salvation that you accomplished as you sent your Son. Thank you that we can celebrate that at Christmas time, that this truly is not just a magical time, it is a supernatural time. Because you, the God of the universe, gave your only Son to die for us. Lord, we just want to ask that you would help everyone listening to this this morning will have a wonderful hope of what Christ has done for us. May you bless us as we go through the rest of our week and, and go into Christmas morning as we celebrate the birth of your Son. Guide and direct us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for listening in this morning. And I want to encourage you on Christmas morning right here uh, on our property at 8.30 in the morning, we're going to have breakfast together. We're going to share singing some carols and have a short devotional time about the Christmas story. And so we would invite you to come along and be a part of that as we do that on this coming Friday morning, Christmas morning. Uh, and we'd love to have you come and be with us. Next Wednesday will be the last devotion we have, and we're going to do some reflection on 2020. And I'm going to look forward to, to leading us through that next Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you soon.